Good day everyone, I am Joseph of Digilitic Solutions. I am a consultant, trainer, speaker, and a book author. Welcome to our course, Mastering Machine Learning Algorithm. In this course, we will learn about joint probabilities. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify joint probability, differentiate between conditionally dependent and independent variables used in joint probabilities and appreciate the use of joint probabilities. In our last session, we talked about conditional probability. We described about an event that could happen if honesty is observed. However, we said that the real world does not always operate in honesty or in honest to goodness rule. So we also explained the characteristics of an outcome if tainted with dishonesty. This is anchored on the fact that in real life, there are always unexpected events. If you missed lesson 4, you may pause this video and come back if you are done with it, as this lesson can be best appreciated if lesson 4 is watched and studied very properly. The link to lesson 4 is given in the description below. In this lesson, we're going to make our previous lesson more interesting. So here is the situation. Sometimes there are two or more variables. Then we would like to know the probability that they each take a particular value. So taking our example in lesson number four, we would like to ask ourselves, what is the probability that the coin lands heads and they say heads. So this kind of question is different from P or the probability of Y is 1 given that X is 1. Let me write here. So P Y equals to 1 given that X is equal to 1. So do you still remember this? So maybe you would like to ask what makes this equation so different? So remember that this one is a conditional probability. It means that there is, uh, there is an assumption that x1 has already taken place. Then this makes y left out to be still taking place. So what we want to know this time is like this. You would like to evaluate p y equals 1 and so we are we are using here and and p y equals 0 so this one calls for understanding joint probabilities so to put things in proper perspective we might want to know the probability that a coin shows heads and I say heads or the probability that the coin shows heads and I say tail. So let's define first what joint probability is for better discussion and understanding. So joint prob probability calculates the likelihood of two or more events occurring together at the same time. So the keywords here are occurring at the same time. Let me underline occurring together at the same time. So for us to better understand this, let, let's make a drawing. So I believe you still remember this kind of drawing back in your high school days or university days, remember? So we have intersection. So supposing this is X, let me use another color, X, and then this one is Y. So we have here variables X and Y. We are concerned with the points of intersection, meaning the values of both X and Y that may occur at the same time. So for example, you have so many values for X. So we have here value here, 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 and here. And then the values of Y are here, 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 and here. But then what we are interested in are those values 
that intersect or the, that intersects or intersect x and y. So for example, y let's use this color for y. Okay, y has these values. Okay. And x has these values. Okay. So, we have here some values that intersect. So, this is what we're concerned about. So, these values here are the events that occur together at the same time and this is what we're concerned much so this is the joint probability and this is denoted by this equation or by this statement p y takes the value of y and x takes the value of x so it also has its functional form which is p y and x so dealing with joint probabilities depends on whether or not the random variables are dependent it can be dependent it can be independent so it is very important to know how to distinguish them because the treatment is unique for each one so how we deal with dependent variables is the uh, is different from dealing with or how we deal with independent variables considering the fact that they have different situations so of course different situations different uh, different treatment or else they would be chaos and the result would be wrong if they are taken uh, similarly so let's start with independent variables so the joint probability can be computed by multiplying the individual probabilities together so this this is like this the probability of y takes y and x takes x okay uh let's say it lacks sorry okay close parenthesis equals the probability of y take that takes the value y times the probability of x that takes the value of x so if we're going to multiply them this value and then this value this will give us the answer of this remember that this one is an independent variable so to clarify our imaginations let's have this example so we're going to find the probability value of a head and again a head so in this case here we are tossing two coins okay so we always know that when you toss a coin so each event or it each, each outcome I mean has the same probability value and that is one half and one half okay so for the head it's one half and for the tail it is one half so considering the fact that we toss the coin twice so therefore the first event is independent and then the second variable is independent okay so having one half for the first variable multiplied to one half for the second variable then we get one fourth so that means the probability of getting head and a head is one fourth okay so since the probability of having an event for each is one half so therefore by multiplying the uh, probabilities of both events we have one fourth so this is actually very simple just to think of and then and then learn to so let's let's make things become more interesting when uh, or things become more interesting when de dependent variables are considered because we have to think of the effect of this thing or of this event to 
the second event. So that, let's make it more interesting. So unlike the first one, in this case we cannot decompose. So meaning decompose is that here, in this case, we factor x, x, and then we also factor y. So they are taken differently. So in this case of dependent dependent variables, things may become so different. So the the problem is that we may not be able to decompose. And then the question here is this, how are we going to decompose? Would that be possible? Okay, so in this case, we are not actually left helpless. We can decompose the joint probability by creating conditional distributions, which is defined by this formula. So in this case, we have the probability of y taking, taking value y and x taking value x, which is equal to the probability of y taking value y given x taking value x times the probability of x taking value x. X. So this is the way we do it. And also because we have here the second event, actually this is the first one and then this is the second. Uh, the second possible thing to happen if we're going to have um, two. Okay. Wait. Yeah. So two dependent events, I mean dependent variables. So, let's use our problem in lesson number four to define our illustration. So, we said that the proportion of telling the truth if it lands tail is 0 0.8. So, remember? And that of telling a lie is 0 0.2. So, in this case, we have four combinations. So, this is the first combination, the second combination, and then this is the third combination, and the fourth combination. We will have them one by one. So, this is what we would like to, uh, I mean, we, we are expected to happen. I mean, the expected results, I mean, and also this one. Okay, so what would be the possible probability measures? So, we know exactly that this is tainted with lies. So when we said that because it is tainted with lies, the probability of telling this is 0 0.8. And so, because this is already 0 0.8, so therefore, what is left out is that 0 0.2. We got 0 0.2 by subtracting this from 1. So. For the third one, this is zero because there is no possibility that I am going to tell that y is one given that x is zero. And this one is perfect one because I will always tell y is zero given that x is zero. So. So 0 0.4, this one, gives the probability that I say heads and the coin lands head. 0 0.1 gives the probability that I say or that I say tails and the coin lands head. So this is increased or this has increased from the real case that is it is always zero if I always told the truth. So this is due to the fact that I sometimes lie if the coin is heads. So originally, you could see here, the original, okay, sorry, here, yeah, the, originally this one is zero. But then, I sometimes tell a lie, so therefore, this zero is increased to 0 0.1, so, supposedly. Okay. So, 
zero here is the probability that I say heads when the coin is actually tails. So this is zero because I never lie if the coin is tails. So in this case, 0 0.5 because it means that the coin lands tails half the time and if it does, I always tell the truth. So this is, this is the probability that I say tails and the coin lands tails. So using our equation, if we sum the probabilities of all four of these events, we should get one. So just to check if all of these things are really correct. So we're going to prove our solutions. So adding 0 0.4 plus 0 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.5, we get 1. So therefore, we have proven that our solutions are correct. Data science often uses statistical inferences to predict or, analyzes or analyze insights from data. Statistical inferences used probability and its characteristics. So, knowing probability is important if you would like to properly deal with data science issues or problems. For example, if you would like to make an analysis of the pandemic, you may want to observe the population that is severely affected, mildly affected, or asymptomatic. So you may want to predict the likelihood of infecting the very healthy population. So after all being said and done, let's try to do this. You have eight pens, three red, two blue, and three black. They are placed in your bag, and supposing you're going to draw three of them randomly, one at a time. What is the probability of getting red first, blue second, and black third? Write your answers in the comment below. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.